Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith. Perfect evening for uh, filming a video, a kind of a rant video, as I'm walking uh, through Ottawa. It's April 5th and we have a snowstorm, believe it or not. The uh, snowflakes are enormous. It's almost like uh, lake effect snow. Uh, but we're not right near a lake. A couple rivers, but that's about it. Anyway, what I want to talk about is the North American global warming hole, basically. In Ottawa, we, we had the first snowfall in early November and it stayed on the ground. And, uh, you know, now we're in early April. So, you know, we're having five or six months of uh, snow on the ground. It's been a brutal winter in Ottawa. Lots of people complaining. You know, wherever you go, people are complaining about all the snow. And I try to explain hey, look, it's all in the Arctic. The Arctic is messed up, and all of our uh, weather patterns are acting bizarrely accordingly because of the Arctic. So if you've seen my videos, many of my videos, you know the story, right? Our accelerated warming in the Arctic lowers the temperature difference to the equator. That means the jet streams slow down and become wavier and become stuck in place. So the extreme weather events like torrential rains leading to floods or, or complete drought and heat waves in other places leading to, you know, all of these things are stressing the uh, global food supply. So um, I'm going to show you, I'm going to do some videos on this terrible flooding in the Midwest that we've had um, recently in the Midwest of the U.S. And Noah is saying that you know, April, it could continue for April and May. You know, there's lots of rain in the forecast. And, uh, you know, this flooding is widespread over many of the uh, Midwestern states. Many of the agricultural, you know, the prime agricultural regions of the U.S. for, for grains and sorghum and all these other things. So the problem is, is that the because of the trade war, the tariffs and stuff on foodstuffs, you know, which is what Trump has been doing, it wasn't profitable for a lot of farmers in this region to sell their grains on market because the price was too low. There was too much available because it wasn't going to China. So supply and demand, supply was huge, prices dropped. So farmers were electing to store this stuff in uh, grain elevators. And of course, a lot of that storage, I think about a third of the food stored or something like that, was damaged, destroyed in the flood, basically has to be thrown away. You know, there's, you've pro probably seen images of these huge grain elevators just collapsing because the water comes in, right? The grains uh, soak up the water and swell, and they basically explode out the, um, the grain elevator. So the, the whole grain elevator basically then just collapses. So this is obviously a huge problem, but not only that, there's lots of contaminants in the, um, there's lots of contaminants that get into the soils and so on, and the floodwaters haven't receded in a lot of regions, and basically how do farmers in these regions plant? So they're gonna miss some of the planting. So if food prices spike towards the end of the year, you know, then uh, you know why, basically. So the next few months are crucial to see actually what happens in terms of the um, amount of planting that can get done in the, in the Midwest. So, so what's going on in North America? You know, if you go on Climate Reanalyzer, just Google Climate Reanalyzer and look at the uh, temperature anomaly. Look at the daily temperature daily uh, temperature information, the temperature anomaly. And I think it's relative to 1979 to 2000. That's sort of average, it's a funny average. It's only 20 years. Normally it's taken to be about 30 years is a climatological average. So if you look there, it's very strange, the patterns that are being set up right now over the planet. So the whole Northern hemisphere is 1.4 degrees above normal. The whole southern hemisphere is 0.1 degrees Celsius 
above normal. So the global average is, is, the, is the, the average of those two, which is 0 0.7 degrees Celsius. Now, if you go to specifically the Arctic region, the Arctic is 5.7 degrees Celsius warmer than normal. And Antarctica is 2.4 degrees Celsius colder than normal. And you can just look at the colors on the maps. Now, the region that is colder than normal in the Northern Hemisphere, in fact, over the entire globe, is really North America. You know, and here I am in Ottawa, and it should be spring and getting warmer and stuff, and we're still having these really cold temperatures. I think it was about minus six or minus seven Celsius last night. So it just doesn't want to warm up. I have a, literally, I have a glacier sitting on my driveway. Okay, uh, my house, my house is, uh, is on the, um, it's on the uh, south side of the street. So the southern, you know, it's north facing. Okay, so on the other side of the street, there's still loads of uh, snow banks and things, but at least the driveways are clear. But on the, on my side of the street, you know, it doesn't get the direct sun. So uh, I have this basic glacier, you know, it's covered in grit and sand and stuff because it's uh, been treacherous. But we've had all of these weather whiplashing events in Ottawa where it gets really cold for a while and then it goes above zero, we get melting and the sidewalks get, you know, all the melting water gets everywhere, the ice refreezes over the sand that you've put down. And, uh, you know, this is causing a huge problem. So as a result, the pot, there's potholes galore in the city. The infrastructure really takes a beating. And the, you know, one thing with this, we haven't experienced the true melting yet of the watershed north. And a few years ago, we had record flooding on the Ottawa River, you know, Montreal, parts of Quebec were flooded. And as far as Montreal, I mean, the Lake Ontario levels were, were really high. So, you know, we might have this to look forward to in the next little while. But uh, anyway, it doesn't matter where you live on this planet, you're probably, you probably have stories about unusual weather events that are happening and you can relate them to the Arctic. I mean, the Arctic, you know, this huge temperature, these huge positive temperature anomalies in the Arctic is doing a real number on the sea ice. I'll show you the graphs and stuff in a future video. But basically, the Arctic sea ice extent is uh, dropping record amounts. It's in record low territory. You know, the big question is, are we, is this going to be the year with the blue ocean event? And again, you know, the season's starting off really poor for the ice, but, you know, things can turn around. I mean, we'll see. It's really difficult to make predictions about the blue ocean event being happening this year or next year. But, I mean, the trends are that, you know, it's going very fast. I mean, every, every indicator is showing that it's, um, you know, severely uh, decreasing in extent, whether you want to look at the area, whether you want to look at the extent, which is defined as 15% sea ice coverage, whether you want to look at the thickness, you know, all of the multi-year ice, the thick ice is pretty much gone. And uh, the problem is, is the Arctic is the refrigerator of the Earth's climate system, if you like, right? As long as there's ice on the ocean water, then the temperature is held to about zero degrees Celsius, just slightly above the melting point, or if in case of seawater, you know, that's about minus 1.4 or so degrees Celsius. And, you know, the whole nature of the Arctic system is changing. So I've done videos on some of the things that I think will happen, you know, when we have a blue ocean event, when we lose all the sea ice. One of the things will be that the Arctic temperatures, the ocean water will, will go up significantly because there's, there's not this latent heat effect, which is keeping the temperatures there at zero. So as soon as the ice is gone, the, temp the ocean water temperatures rise significantly. There's a lot of uh, 
heat being, you know, the, the problem is, is there's a lot of, there'll be a lot of mixing of the water column and there's warm water underneath the ice. And when there's no ice anymore, the wave action and the currents and things, you can get a lot of mixing in the vertical direction of the ocean column and that uh, salty hot water, hotter, hotter salty water, which is, which is denser than the colder fresh water at the surface, those can mix and that heat is brought upward making it really difficult for the ice to form um, when the, in, the, in the winter again. So we're seeing all of these effects and uh, you know one of the things is that the center of mass of the cold is no longer the North Pole. I've talked about this in a video about you know if you take the center of Greenland that'll be the new center of cold in the Arctic when there's no sea ice and that's unfortunately at 17, it's 17 degrees latitude south of the North Pole. So it's at 83 degrees latitude north. So if that becomes the new center of rotation for the jet streams, which are far weakened because the Arctic is getting so warm, then that could actually go a long way towards explaining why we're getting this persistent cold global warming hole, if you like, over North America, because the whole system is being offset. And the problem is, is that the Greenland meltlet rates will greatly accelerate, it, accelerate. you know, with no, no uh, sea ice, you know, and a greatly warming Arctic, we're going to see melt rates of Greenland spiking upwards. And this is a huge problem for sea level rise, of course, you know, rapidly accelerating. So, the whole system is rapidly changing. The changes are accelerating. And uh, we're really facing the consequences. And there's a lot of unknowns. And there's a lot of pieces of the puzzle that um, I've been really starting to think a lot about You know what actually is going to transpire. You know, how quickly, you know, what size, what magnitude. You know, and, and what is it going to mean for for us on this planet? Because you know, we're the action to do anything about climate change is, you know, quite frankly, it's uh, quite depressing. Now in the U.S., we've got the Trump, you know, climate denier government. You know, and the absurdity is coming out, like uh, from the administration. You know, apparently, according to Trump, when turbines, uh, the noise causes cancer. Well, this is, he, he, I guess he's discovered new physics uh, because nobody else th thinks that. Uh, you know, I don't know where this is coming from. But uh, anyway, in Ontario, we have the Ford government, you know, that slashed all of the great uh, climate change plans that Ontario had. And Trudeau is mired in this scandal right now. And the opposition conservatives, you know, they're saying, yeah, day one when we get in, we're going to just, just, just uh, destroy basically any climate action plans that the liberals have taken. You know, the, they finally implemented the carbon tax, finally came in to being on April 1st. And of course, the election in the fall, you know, late fall, early winter could uh, completely dismantle all of those programs. That's the problem. It takes time to build things up, and these things can be slashed in a matter of, uh, you know, stroke of a pen, you know, day after the election, after you get a party in that is denying climate change. So we still have this uh, going on, and meanwhile, the turmoil on the planet is getting worse and worse. You know, I'd still argue that, um, we need to do this three-legged bar stool uh, so solutions, you know, not solutions, but three, we have to try the three-legged bar stool to, uh, if we have any hope of preserving a, you know, getting back to uh, some stable climate. Slash fossil fuel emissions, remove carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, also methane, and deploy, deploy solar radiation management technologies, um, to basically to cool the planet, to give us time to, uh, you know, achieve these other things. So everything right now is going downhill. It's a very dire time for the climate, but, you know, we've got to do something eventually. Thanks for listening.